Hey everybody, Steve Bergen here, and I'm going to teach you, hopefully, seven more GD tricks. And I'm timing myself to make sure I do this in seven minutes. The first trick is to deal with the triangles and data validation on a spreadsheet. So I'm going to create a spreadsheet, and I'll make it slightly bigger so you can see. And I want to force the entry so that as I type in something, here into these cells the user only has several choices so I go up to um, data and I go to validation on the bottom and I say not list from a range but list of items there's many other choices you can make here and I will say Red Sox um, Celtics Patriots and then choose save and now when anyone's da entering data on this spreadsheet and they click the triangle they have a pull down menu to make those choices okay a little bit over one minute we push on right the next thing that I want to deal with is in a, a an environment such as spreadsheets I can press command slash on a Mac or control slash on a PC and that invokes all the shortcuts that are unique and interesting and useful in the GD environment. Got it? Command slash or control slash. Next, I want to deal with the templates. So when I um, come to my GD screen and I am going to do something brand new I might say hey there's a template already for me that somebody has done so if I go up to drive.google.com slash templates I will see a huge collection ever growing of templates that people have done broken down by categories document spreadsheets presentations and on the bottom left you'll see students and teachers and if you teach a foreign language you'll also see choices for other languages and I guarantee that you will find something when you go here and you're looking for something relevant and you go to the category and you search a template um, for something related to math or fractions right or writing you'll find a template that you might want to use so take advantage of it okay next the fourth thing I want to do is I want to make sure that um, you have the awareness that when you're in a GD um, environment, word processing, you can have shortcuts for phrases. If you're an English teacher and you're grading students papers, you can have phrases. I will create a word processing document. I'm almost at four minutes so I'm just about keeping on schedule here. So if I want to have a shortcut that says to the student this is a fragment or this part of speech is wrong, um, and what I can do is go to the um, tools menu and go to preferences and I can at this point type something in right so I can replace um, frag with whoops frag should be on replace frag with um, this is a sentence fragment please read aloud and you will know I can have anything substitute so I can have SBA and I can replace that with my address I can have um, my EMSB and I can replace that with my email address um, and so you do that and make sure you check OK and do things that you're going to know. So if I
type in frag and I go space, it types that in automatically. Okay, if I type in, I've already done my email, SBE. Okay, so that is called a preference for a shortcut. You can have um, translation. So let's get something here. And you don't have to highlight anything. And this is a document that is one document that I will rename as sample. And so when you go up to the translate menu and you choose tool translate, it doesn't alter your original. It gives you a translated copy and you pick your language, um, whatever it is. I'll choose Bulgarian and I'll go translate. And now it translates that document into another language, creating two documents and you can see two tabs here, a tab for sample and a tab for the translated version. Okay, we're almost there um, on feature number six and I just hit six minutes, so I'm behind schedule. You can make your documents work offline. Very, very important. If I go back to this and I look under more, there's the ability to do offline. So if I choose offline, it makes sure that it syncs with files on my hard drive. And now if I turn my wireless off, which I can do, that will prove to you that I do not have any internet access. In fact, I will go to Google, right, and you'll see that I can't connect. But if I go to drive.google.com, even with no internet access, my files are there, and I can load something up, and it's loading it from a version that's on my hard drive. And if I turn on internet access, and I will save and close this, when internet access gets turned on, then it automatically syncs, right, what we have. And everything is the way you would imagine and want it to be. So that is very, very cool. And then the last one, actually one more point on that one. Um, one more point on that. You can turn that off by going to the gear. You can say disable online use. So you have that ability, but there's really not much reason to disable online use. Right? You may find yourself in a pinch, right, not having internet access, but wanting to have access to all your files. So I suggest you keep online working. Okay, the last thing is you may have noticed that when I created a brand new document, for your eyes, the, the typing was automatically red and large font. Okay, I don't want that anymore because this demo is over. So if I highlight any word, I can change it to be my normal text. You can even see the red right over there. So if I go to normal text and I go to the triangle next to it, I can update my normal text to match what's highlighted. So if I highlight auto and I get out of italics and I get out of, and I'll go to black and I will go to a normal size of 12. Okay, now I've got this word highlighted and I can make it by going normal text and this arrow I can apply normal text you can also do that under a different menu okay um, but this is what you want update normal text to match so you update normal text to match you can also do that by going to format paragraph styles and then options normal text, update normal text to match. So you can update normal text to match in two places. But that's only for this document. Only for this document. I can prove it to you by making a new document and you'll see it be red and italics as I start typing because I didn't make it permanent. What I needed to do was when I was in this document and I had updated the text, 
I need to go back and for a second time go to paragraph styles and options and save as my default styles. So I decided I want black 12 point to be my normal, but that's for this one document. By saving as my default styles, right, now your default styles have been saved. And if I go file and new document, and now you see it there. Okay, I am sorry, this is 11. So instead of seven minutes, it's 11 minutes for the seven features. Um, I apologize for that, but I do hope this has been useful. Bye, everybody.